Welcome to Demusifying 5G. In recent videos regarding over-the-air testing, we discussed testing methodologies, the requirement for far field conditions, and how they can be achieved. Today we want to talk about calibration. What type of system calibration is required for accurate, reliable, and repeatable RF measurements? And what role does the calibration of the device under test play in those discussions? For this, I welcome Alexander Nering, Application Engineer with Rodin Schwartz. Thanks, Andreas, for having me. Welcome, welcome. Let's get right to it. So my very first question would be, what is the most important aspect that we need to consider for calibration when uh, talking about OTA testing? So as you already mentioned in the introduction, we first of all want to differentiate between the system calibration and uh, device calibration. System calibration is important, of course, for not having only precise but also accurate measurements uh, when we do anything over the air. In recent times, we saw an increasing demand for device calibration as well, which is a completely different topic. Um, but of course, both are, are really valid discussions in this field. Okay, so and uh, if I calibrate an antenna array, that would be an example for device calibration? Exactly. So this would be the most prominent example of, of yeah, how to have an actually calibrated array antenna that we can use for beamforming. Okay. So, and then the system calibration is a prerequisite for the array calibration. Is that correct? Mm, not necessarily. So it depends on the device and the test that we want to do. System calibration is always required when you want to have absolute values that are correct and want to do anything with hash of frequency response. So we want to see yeah, our power levels in an accurate me method over different frequencies. Okay. So let's deep dive a little bit in system calibration first. Um, what do we need to do and what are the main pitfalls that we have to take care of? Okay, so I brought a few slides already to show. And we have here a generic OTA setup. And when we look at it, we see any DUT and there's an over-the-air link to another antenna. And we also see the first problem that we have. How can we measure the transmission of our DUT if the calibration plane on one side is on a cable or conducted, and on the other side it's in the air. To tackle this issue, let's first separate the setup into individual parts. We have some network on, one, on, on either side, actually. Um, typically it would be a cable, but it can be any passive or also active components. And then we have the two antennas, which have a certain gain. In the center, we see the free space pass loss. Um, this is the actual loss over the air. When we now look at one simplified setup, where on one side we have a transmitter, on the other side we have a receiver, we can of course also switch the setup because most of these things are reciprocal, even especially when we're working with passive antennas. Um, but here we can see that from the transmitter side, uh, we know our power that we have, and then we have these gain values, the gain of the DUT and the gain of our probe. So the gain of our DUT would be the measurement in this example. Um, Currently, I'm talking about gain, but we can extend this to EIRP or even to DUTs, which don't even have an RF port. But let's keep the setup as it is for now. So the free space pass loss in the center, that is the loss that occurs over the air. And it's defined for having a transmitter and receiver as an isotropic radiator. Isotropic radiators exist in theory, but not in reality. So every real antenna will have a certain gain. So the free space pass loss plus our transmitter and receiver gain gives us the information of the total loss that occurs from the input of the transmitter antenna to the output of the receiver antenna. And this is why we actually use the gain. So the free space path loss is frequency dependent. That means I need to do a system calibration for every frequency that I would like to test. Is it? Exactly. Um, it's essentially, it's the same as cables. The only difference is that we can't um, measure the free space pass loss without actually having an antenna to measure it in the first place. And since we want to measure our DUT, which is an antenna, then we have a little bit of a problem. So continuing here, how do we do, how we could do measure this is we want to know the gain of the DUT, and then we can try to determine all the other values that we see on the slide. So we control the power that we transmit. We can measure the power that we receive. So now we could think about measuring the networks L1, L2, measure the probe antenna gain and the free space path loss. The probe antenna gain may even be um, already in a data sheet or we can get this from a certified lab. The free space path loss may be estimated using the free space path loss equation we saw a minute ago. But this is not a straightforward way to actually measure the gain of our DUT. 
So an alternative would be to use something called the gain transfer method. In the gain transfer method, what we do is we replace our DUT first with the reference antenna. For this reference antenna, we have to know the gain. Again, there are different methods for actually getting the gain of an antenna, and if you give your antenna to a certified lab, they can give you the real gain of the antenna down to really accurate values. So we need one antenna where we have the reference gain. Then we see the equation here, which is just all the components as we saw already. The red ones is what we can measure. The green one is the antenna that we know from the datasheet or the lab. So the rest of our system is the black values, the losses in the cables and over the air and the gain of our probe. We don't have to know the gain of the probe. It's something that's part of the system. We can just say that the system loss that we want to establish here is the measured loss totally plus that the gain that we know because this is not part of our system, it's just required for establishing the system loss. So the gain antenna here is used to require, uh, the, the, the reference antenna, sorry, is used to require this uh, system loss. And then when we place any unknown DUT in this location where we had our reference antenna, we can just measure it again. We know the system loss, so we can determine the gain of our DUT. So that means in a gain transfer method, we do not actually know the parameters of the individual components. Exactly. Um, all the black values, as I showed them in the slide, the losses of the cables and the, the over-the-air loss, are just pushed together as one value that we determine as the overall system loss. So we basically uh, compare uh, what we have measured to a known antenna. Exactly. So um, essentially you could say I measure my system once with the reference antenna, I get like zero dBm as an output. Um, then I measure the same system again with a different antenna, I get 5 dBm as my received uh, power. Um, when I use the same transmit power, I know, okay, I have 5 dB more, so my gain of the unknown antenna is 5 dB more than the gain of the reference antenna. That's essentially the procedure here. If, and that's the next point, of course, we don't walk uh, along with passive antennas, so we cannot know if the power that's the gain that's applied uh, is independent of the power, that's for passive antennas. If you have an active antenna, that's no longer the case. Um, if my active antenna has an input of 0 dBm, it might have a 10 dB gain. If it has an input of minus 10 dBm, it might have a 20 dB gain. We don't know this. So we have to establish what is the input power to our DOT. And even more specific, if we have an active DOT that's generating the signal itself, so there is no connector at all then we need to take at least one additional step. So again, I brought a slide for this. So here we see a really simplified setup. We have something that can generate and or analyze in the middle on the bottom here. And then we have again our reference antenna. And we see some calibration planes, A, B, C and D. So from the output, let's say the output, the transmit output A of any test and measurement instrument, we first want to move the calibration plane to the input of our DOT. So we do this by either measuring this part individually, doing a port calibration on the network analyzer, or using something like the frequency user correction that we have as a K544 option in SMW and FSW. So somehow we can move our calibration plane to the input of the DOT. After we did this, we know the exact power level at the input of the reference antenna or DOT. And from this point on, we just do the same as we did before, like this gain transfer method. We say, okay, we are now at calibration point B. We measure from B to D. We know our gain of the reference antenna from B to C. So just by measuring BD and knowing BC, we then can determine CD, which is the over-the-air loss, the gain of the probe and the rest of the cables. Um, there again, we don't know the individual components, but we know, know everything from the air interface of our DOT until the end of the cable, uh, cable. So then we can do receiver and transmitter measurements with this part of the system. When we have an active DOT with RF port, we use our uh, established cable losses that we know, transmission parameters, whatever. 
And if we have an active DOT that generates or receives the signals without any RF port, you just leave the cable out of the way at all. Okay. So that's very interesting, Alex. So if I would ask you, can we demonstrate that with Roden Schwartz instruments? What would you say? Well, I would say, of course, we can. Um, we have different opportunities to do this with network analyzers, signal generators, uh, analyzers. So, definitely possible. Okay, cool. But um, this is, of course, something that we want to explore in a, another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.